Hey there, and welcome back to the Business Owner Freedom Podcast. A leader is someone who admits when they are wrong and they take full responsibility. Hey, if a member of your team or if you yourself want to get into a fantastic leadership program where we talk about how to take responsibility, things of that nature, we also talk about how to be a high performer, how to communicate, how to resolve conflict, and many, many other things. We've named the program now. It's Leader Fluence, L-E-A-D-E-R-F-L-U-E-N-C-E. Yes, it's a coined word. We took the word leadership and the word influence and we slammed them together and we now have what's called Leader Fluence. We are launching the Leader Fluence Certification Program through Gray University this month. The launch is going to start September 10th and culminate the evening of September 17th. So go to gray.university, www.gray.university, and that's G-R-A-Y, and get on the waiting list today. Pretty soon... We will be having signups and enrollments for that at a very much reduced price. It's actually one third of what the price will be uh, going forward after launch time. So you may, you want to take advantage of this. The program is a 12 month time frame program with 10 modules, and we take two breaks during the program. And every month we're going to have live Q and A's that you can be a part of. We're also going to have live workshops. And the workshops will also be recorded in case your schedule doesn't permit you to attend a workshop or a Q&A session. They'll all be recorded and you can be a part of that. But if you have a team member that really wants to be certified in leadership, really needs to take their leadership to the next level, or if you yourself as a business owner want to take your leadership to the next level, this is the program for you. So go to gray, G-R-A-Y dot university right now and get on the waiting list and very soon we'll be taking uh, your information for signups see you there so what prevents a leader from accepting full responsibility and admitting they're wrong I had uh, someone leave a comment on a uh, post I made yesterday on social media and I basically said what I just said at the start of this show which is you know, a leader is someone who admits when they're wrong and they take full responsibility. And this person re- replied back and said, you know, it's very difficult sometimes to do that. And they went into a diatribe about why it's difficult and so forth. And I didn't respond. I, my initial thought was, well, are you letting them off the hook because it's difficult? Are you trying to explain it away? Or do you have somebody in mind that you're trying to defend with your words? And I didn't ask those questions to the person because it really doesn't matter. And, and, and in some essence, they're right. It is difficult. When you make a mistake as a leader, it can be very difficult and trying to have to admit that you're wrong. But being a leader comes with responsibility. And one of those great big responsibilities is to be honest, transparent, forthright, and so then admitting when you're wrong. So I'm going to use an example that I saw this week, and so if you're listening to this podcast uh, later on, you may think back to this, you you may not remember. And I'm going to use this person, uh, even though they're in the political realm, and I'm not disparaging them, and I'm not trying to say they're a bad leader, I just think they made a mistake in this case, and I'm not trying to be against their party or anything. So don't read into this anything other than I'm just using this as an example on leadership, and it just it just happened, so it's it's in my mind's eye. So the Speaker of the House, Miss Pelosi, she went into a local business this past weekend and to get her hair done, and. So there was a lot of flack about that because she wasn't wearing a mask and we're in this COVID period and and the business wasn't technically completely open and, and so on and so forth. But anyway, 
long story short was people that saw that, you know, of course, went into a social media rage about it and, you know, called her a hypocrite and all kinds of stuff. But I, I wouldn't go that far. I just think what, what happened here was is you have a person in a leadership role, in a very public leadership role, that made a made a bad decision. And to be blunt, we all make mistakes and we all make bad decisions. And this is a very simple bad decision. It's not uh, a major detrimental thing that she did. It was just something kind of silly and stupid and probably wish she hadn't have done it now. But instead of just owning it and coming out when caught and saying, you're right, I shouldn't have done it. Uh, that was wrong. I apologize. You know, and she could have made a little light of it. Like, well, you know, girls got to get her hair done. Um, because that's, that's the way, you, you know, through humor, you can admit you're, you're wrong. And, and we all went, would have, would've, we've all would have accepted that and said, you know, she's human. She, she admitted her mistake and moved on. But instead her, handlers if you will her crew helped her spin it and first they spun it is to say well she didn't know that it was not right and didn't know that it wasn't proper and all these things which if you watched how it progressed she couldn't continue with that line of thought or that line of dialogue because we all know that she's smarter than that and that's admitting that that you're not smart enough to know what's wrong and so they spun it the following day a matter of fact Miss Pelosi got up and spoke herself and said um, that she was basically trapped, that she fell for it, and she'll accept the responsibility for falling for the trap, but she thinks that the business owes her apology because they set her up. Like she called it a setup, I think was her exact words. And so now what happens is when a leader does this, especially in the public, to save face, you can't now just back off and say, you know what, I made a mistake, and you know, because because now you've pushed this thing, and now uh, one defensive conversation leads to more defensiveness, and then you back yourself into a corner as a leader, and then you feel like you can't really tell the truth at some point. Um, and that's what we're talking about here: is you know, truth versus non-truth. So when we don't admit we're wrong as a leader when we're confronted with something we've done, we're really not telling the truth, especially when we know it. Now, if somebody accuses you of something and you're innocent of that, that's not what we're talking about. But when it's blatantly obvious, or even if it's something that is said in a way that was, even though it was truth, was harmful or hurtful, We have to own that as leaders. If we want to be a leader, we have to own that. We have to take responsibility, and then we have to apologize for it. Here's the thing. You probably have something in your mind's eye right now. You're thinking, okay, yeah, this is something I've done in the last month or year that I really regret, and I've had a hard time admitting it. We as business owners, as leaders, as parents, as spouses, we do these things. And then we have a hard time admitting them. But a leader will eventually, notice I used eventually because we don't do it right away sometimes. We try to be defensive for a while. But we'll eventually take full responsibility and admit our wrong. Here's the thing about that. That is powerful. One of the most important things for you relating to your team or to others, to other business owners, to leaders, to customers, is to build an, a really true baseline of trust. And you know the best way for somebody to gain trust in you is to see that you're human and that when you fail, you're willing to accept it, own it, and claim it outwardly and then apologize for it and take full responsibility. Matter of fact, I 
if you go back to Miss Pelosi, that would have been a perfect time for her to have built massive trust in our country. Instead of hiding from the fact that she made a bad decision, an incorrect decision, she should have just owned it. And if she had, many of us would have went, wow, that was big of her. And so the fear that she had of talking about it and being honest about it and the flack from it, while she would have gotten some, some on the right would have been just absolutely obnoxious about it, for sure. But the majority of the public, the people, would have went, wow, you know, she, she relates to us now. So I want you to remember that as a business owner, as a leader, as a parent, as a spouse, in all these roles we find ourselves in, I want you to remember when you make a mistake, the way to build trust is to actually own it, take full responsibility, not hide it, explain it away. Trust comes through putting everything out in the light grabbing it from the dark and bring it to the light and owning it. Now, if you're constantly making mistakes and having to apologize consistently, that's a whole other problem and you need to change your behaviors. But when you do make that human error, which we all do from time to time, no matter what relationship you're in, you're going to make them. If you just own it and say, you know what? You're right. I was wrong. I owe you an apology, and I take full responsibility for that, and I'm going to change. Man, there's there's some strong words right there, and you go, wow, this person is committed to being different, to behaving different, to treating me different. And while you did nick the trust that was there, you still have the ability to build it all back and then some. Let's think about friends for a minute. Think about a friend that you've had for many, many years in your life. Do you remain friends with them for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, whatever it is? Do you remain friends with them because they're perfect? Well, since nobody's perfect, we know the answer there. You remain friends with them because you trust them. Who's that person that you could call at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, I need to talk to you. I have a problem. Or that they could call you and say, I need to talk to you. I have a problem. I want you to get that person in your in your thoughts right now. Picture their face. What is it about them that you trust? More than likely, if you trust them deeply, you probably haven't agreed on everything throughout your relationship. Matter of fact, you may have had arguments may have been through a lot of things together, may have had a lot of friction in your lives. You may have called each other out on some stupid things you've done through life and held each other accountable to some things. That's how deep trust is built. It's not built on everybody being perfect and shallow and looking the part. Trust is built on by living life together. So you got to remember, everybody that's, on your team, everybody that's watching you, everybody that's wanting to hire you as a as a client, and all the customers looking at you, the vendors looking at you, your employees looking at you, these people are not looking at you to be perfect. They're looking at you to be a leader. And we confuse that sometimes. Being a leader does not mean you need to be perfect. Being a leader means you need to be human and allow them to trust you and you to trust them. So you don't have to hide. You don't have to keep in the dark your mistakes any longer. Matter of fact, you need to share them. There's power in that. And you're thinking, wow, some of them, if I shared them, my, my team would look at me like I'm, I'm a weak individual. I, I'm, I'm crazy. Yeah, there may be some things that you don't want to share with them that didn't impact them that they don't need to know about. But when you make a mistake in dealing with them, talking with them, relating with them, you better own those. 
because they're watching to see how you continue to build trust with them, how you're going to repair those things that you've done. So when you get angry and you're, you're not able to hold your emotions and you blurt out things that you shouldn't say, Once you calm down, you think through that and go, man, I shouldn't have done that. Own it. Go back and say, you know what? That was wrong, and I'm sorry. Now, if you continue to do that and keep continue to lose your temper and, and yell and scream and say things you shouldn't, you just can't keep saying sorry. It doesn't sweep it under the rug. You're going to have to go get some kind of coaching or help or work on your anger. You have to do something to change your behavior. But you do need to own it and you do need to apologize for it and take full responsibility for it. And when you do that and then you clean up the behavior, those people around you will respect you for that. At the end of the day, people don't have to love you. They don't have to like you even, but they do need to respect you. Now, if you own things and you're human and you care and you go to the level we're talking about here, chances are they're going to really like you too. But if they lose respect for you, then everything else goes out the window. Matter of fact, they'll probably look to go somewhere else. So my plea to you is think about some leaders you've worked around maybe people that you work for or mentor you, or maybe they're from your church or your, in, within your family or some other organization that you belong to that, are, that you see them as a really strong leader. Watch them. Learn from them. And my guess is when they make mistakes, they own it. And they'll just say, you know what? I messed that up. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's not going to happen again. And if it's something they didn't necessarily do to you, but they just messed up, they still own it. And they'll say, you know what? I messed up something the other day. I want to tell you about it. Because they know their heart of hearts that they're trying to do the right thing and they're going to make mistakes. And they're confident enough in themselves as a leader to express those things. And when they do, they know that their humanists will connect with your humanists and that makes them a much stronger leader. So watch those people if you would. And I want you to watch another thing. I want you to go through this week. So whenever you're listening to this podcast, no matter if it's immediately after it's published or years after it's published, when you listen to this podcast, whatever day and time, take the next week's worth of work And try to focus on taking full responsibility for your mistakes, even the small ones. And watch how people around you act differently. Because only people that are secure and confident in themselves take full responsibility. And those are the people that we want as leaders. Enjoy the journey.